Okay, guys, we're back again. This time we're going to finish up uh, section 11.2. Um, again, moving with vectors in space. Vectors in a plane. Okay, vectors in a plane. It's not really vectors in space. Um, so uh, you know, let's just get on with it. Uh, this is where the calculus actually starts. That previous one wasn't technically calculus. So, uh, time for us to go with some calculus. Okay, uh, here are the cramped living quarters at the rear end of the train. Um, this is me trying to get you into this near Snowpiercer movie. Um, ultimately, Snowpiercer is a story of class revolution. Lower class passengers in the back of the train plan to overtake the rich passengers in the front of the train and force a redistribution of the wealth. Wow. I mean, that if that doesn't sound... Uh, uh, politically charged. I don't know what is. Uh, as the revolution moves up the train, the velocity pa and path of the train starts to play in a role in the often bloody skirmishes. Yes, there are firearms and there are uh, fight scenes. In particular, there is a long tunnel at the end of the Yekaterina Bridge um, that gave the armed forces of a train the upper hand since they were the only ones equipped with uh, night vision goggles and you know you can go wild there thinking about the um, implications of that little bit and um, how is velocity computed with these vector valued functions okay so now now we're at it that's that's our calculus how do we figure out velocity so first of all we've got the position of the snow piercer given by r theta equals sine 3t cosine 5t where t is between 0 and 2 pi so first of all find the position of the snow piercer at t equals 3 pi over 4 okay simple enough all we need to do is substitute 3 pi over 4 into our work so the position we're calling that r at 3 pi over 4 that's going to be equal to the sine of 3 times 3 pi over 4, and then the cosine of 5 times 3 pi over 4. So this function is getting really um, the periodicity here. It's kind of crazy now, isn't it? All right, so uh, let's figure this out. We've got... Um, 3 times 3 pi over 4, that's 9 pi over 4. If we subtract, well, 8 pi over 4 is 2 pi. So if I subtract 8 pi over 4 from 9 pi over 4, I just get pi over 4. So the sine of pi over 4 is rad 2 over 2. All right, let's do the same thing with cosine. Uh, 5 times 3 pi over 4, that's 15 pi over 4. Uh, that's beyond one period of the circle. One period of the circle is 2 pi, which is the same thing as 8 pi over 4. So if I take 15 pi over 4 and I minus 2 pi, that's the same thing as 15 pi over 4 minus 8 pi over 4. 8 pi over 4 um, is, whoa, that's just, oh, sorry. I didn't actually do the subtraction. 8 minus 15, 15 minus 8 is 7 pi over 4. Okay, 7 pi over 4 is in quadrant 4. So then we get negative root 2 over 2. Okay, so there, that is the position. Next. Okay, if the velocity is the derivative what is the velocity at 3 pi over 4? Well, first of all, let's find um, the derivative of rxt. Okay, so the derivative of rxt. Okay, we're going to take to calling that the velocity x. And that is equal to the derivative of sine. So what's the derivative of sine? Cosine? Yeah derivative of sine is cosine. 
And then what's the derivative of 3t? Well, that's just 3. So this is 3 cosine of 3t. How about the derivative of the y component? Okay, hopefully you've worked a little bit ahead of me now. Um, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. The derivative of 5t is 5. So this is negative 5 sine 5t. Okay, I don't know why I went and made angle brackets there. That's totally inappropriate. So now that I've got that little bit, um, my velocity vector, that's equal to the x component, which is 3 cosine 3t, and then the y component, which is negative 5 sine 5t. And then if I want to find the velocity vector at 3 pi over 4, well, I'm just going to substitute 3 pi over 4 into all of these guys. So this is equal to 3 times cosine of and let's just not belabor the point, that's 9 pi over 4. And then negative 5 times the sine of 15 pi over 4. And we, we kind of did these analyses already. Um, 9 pi over 4 is the same thing as pi over 4, and cosine of pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2. Multiply that by 3, and you get 3 radical 2 over 2. Sine of 15 pi over 4 is the same thing as the sine of 7 pi over 4. The sine of 7 pi over 4 is negative radical 2 over 2. So negative radical 2 over 2 times negative 15. Let me redo that. Negative radical 2 over 2 times negative 5 is 5 radical 2 over 2. Okay, so there's our velocity vector. If you remember from yesterday or the day before or whenever you're watching this, this means that at t equals 3 pi over 4, the train, Snowpiercer, is going to be in quadrant 4. But as you can see over here, its velocity is heading toward quadrant 1. So it is heading in the northeast direction here. How about acceleration? Uh, well, this is, you know, at this point it's just an exercise because it's the exact same function. So the acceleration is equal to the derivative and let's just put that all together now. The derivative with respect to t of 3 cosine 3t and negative 5 sine, oh, that's bad looking math there. We're taking the derivative of each component separately. And d dt of negative 5 sine 5t. Okay, what is that acceleration vector equal to? Well, this is going to be equal to 9, negative 9 sine 3t. And this is going to be negative 25 cosine 5t. Okay, and that's just taking those simple derivatives. See, I, I can do those derivatives fast if I need to. But I'm teaching, so why would I? Um, OK. The acceleration, therefore, at 3 pi over 4, that's going to be equal to negative 9 sine of 9 pi over 4 and negative 25 cosine of 15 pi over 4. Uh, what does that equal to? Uh, sine of 9 pi over 4, uh, we already figured that out, right? That's rad 2 over 2. So negative 9, so negative 9 rad 2 over 2. And then what's cosine of 15 pi over 4? Well, that's 
negative rad 2 over 2. Negative rad 2 over 2 times negative 25 is positive 25 rad 2 over 2. Okay, so already this we've done so much more work than we did in um, the previous section. Uh, but we need to move on. So let's move on to our next task here. Oh, there's a number four. Okay, if R0 is 2, 2, and we have a velocity function of 4 cosine t, negative 2 sine t, um, can we find the position at 5 pi over 6? And the answer is yes, because we're going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus on these problems. To review, the fundamental theorem of calculus says that the integral from a to b of x prime of, we'll use t in this case, that's going to be equal to the x coordinate at b minus the x coordinate at a. Similar for the y coordinate. So we can do the exact same here. Notice we have two uh, values of t that we're interested in. We'll make the upper one, the bigger one of those b, we'll make the smaller one of those a. That way we don't have to deal with any weirdness. And we'll just keep on doing it. The integral from 0 to 5 pi over 6 of uh, 4 cosine t dt. That's equal to the x coordinate at 5 pi over 6 minus the x coordinate at 0. That's exactly the same thing that we wrote here, the fundamental theorem of calculus. It's called fundamental theorem of calculus because it is so important to our work here. All right, so the antiderivative of cosine is sine. So this is 4 times the sine of t from 0 to 5 pi over 6. That's equal to the x-coordinate at 5 pi over 6 minus the x-coordinate at 0. Oops, we actually have a number for the x-coordinate at the 5 pi over 6. The x-coordinate at 5 pi over 6. No, we don't. I, I, I got rid of the wrong one. Yeah, so the X coordinate at zero is two. All right, so we're gonna put this all together again. What's the sine of five pi over six? I think that's one half. Four times one half is two. Minus, what's the sine of zero? Well, that's zero. And then we're gonna add to it the two from over here. And that's gonna be equal to x coordinate at 5 pi over 6. And yes, that is 4, but I'm just going to leave it the way it is because this is calculus and you don't actually have to add anything unless you need to add something for the next part of the problem. So I'm just going to leave it like that. Everyone knows that that's 4. No problem. All right, let's do the same thing for the y coordinate. Uh, I said it, this works in a similar way and I mean it. We're just going to go 0 to 5 pi over 6. But this time we're going to put the y coordinate or the y component of velocity, which is negative 2 sine t dt. And that's going to be equal to the y coordinate at 5 pi over 6 minus the y coordinate at 0. Uh, we're going to take the antiderivative here. The antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. So this become, becomes two cos bishams, listen to me, uh, two cosine t from 0 to 5 pi over 6. And that's going to be equal to the y coordinate at 5 pi over 6 minus the y coordinate at 0, which is, yeah, it's just 2. Okay, so there's a lot more to do here. Um, Cosine of 5 pi over 6 is negative root 3 over 2 multiplied by um, 2, and that's negative root 3. 
minus the cosine of zero is zero. Zero, uh, the cosine of zero is one. One times two is two. We're going to add the two from the other side, and that gives me my y coordinate at five pi over six. Okay, and yes, that's equal to negative rad three period. Okay, so all of that was meant to just inform you about how to use those integrals and derivatives to get you other parts of the motion or other, other um, concepts of the motion or consequences, of, in particular velocity and acceleration. Uh, it also was meant to show you how you can use the fundamental theorem of calculus to go ahead and give you um, the x-coordinate, for example, given the velocity, uh, or the y-coordinate given velocity as well. You can probably imagine that the same thing holds true if you have the acceleration vector. If you integrate each component of the acceleration vector, you get a a difference in the velocities. Um, now we're going to move on to more, well, yeah, just more. Let's just say more. Yeah. Now we have the velocity vector is given to us here. Uh, we have this concept of displacement. Displacement really is just uh, the change in position, but in two dimensions. So what's the change in position in the x direction? What's the change in position from the y direction? Notice that both of those are just the concept of displacement as we talked about them in the fundamental theorem of calculus. Um, over here on the second line, we have any position is equal to um, the old position plus the displacement. I know that's kind of hard to read what that is, but that is this right here is the old position. And this right here is displacement. So that should make sense. Any new position is equal to the old position plus displacement. That's kind of the definition, or meshes with the definition of displacement anyways. All of this brings us to this example here uh, with our friend, the Snowpiercer train. Um, it's really funny in the movie. They, the train, or at least the engine of the train, is like a god. And so people end up worshiping this train which, uh, you know, what a smart movie that is, just to, the worship of technology and how that plays into um, modern modernity and our worship of our iPhones. Think about it. Uh, Snowpiercer moves with a velocity given by that. I got to be honest, that looks like an ugly function. Uh, at t equals 4, the position is 8, 16. So first of all, find the, train, the position of the train at t equals 0. So I'm going to, you can pause it right here, and I'll come up with an answer, and you can compare. So pause it, 3, 2, 1, pause your chance. Okay, here's our answer for the x-coordinate worked out. Notice we have our fundamental theorem of calculus right here again. Uh, this is a little different because now we're substituting into the upper limit, so you got to be careful with your algebra again. Um, should you figure everything out, you get 8 is equal to 8 minus x of 0, which of course implies that x of 0 is in fact equal to 0. Now that you know that, why don't you pause it again and try to figure out the y-coordinate. Okay, so we've finished up here, and what do we have? Well, we've integrated the y component of velocity, and that's equal to y at 4 minus the y position at 0. The y position at 4 is 16, 16 minus the y position at 0. Antiderivative here, you can see, substituting, of course, our 4. Our four and we get 16 is equal to 16 minus y0, 
which implies that y0 is equal to 0. So the position at t equals 0 is 0, 0, which I admit doesn't make for a whole lot of an excitement, but uh, that's the answer anyways. Part b, we'll do that live together. Um, total distance traveled. Uh, well, maybe we should take a look at the formula before we uh, do anything, just to remind you of that. That's going to be the integral of speed. Isn't that interesting? You're going to integrate speed, or the magnitude of velocity, and you're going to get yourself uh, distance traveled. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, So we're going to integrate from 0 to 4 the speed, which is the square root of the y component, or sorry, the x component of velocity, which was t minus 3 pi cosine pi t squared plus, and I can see I'm running out of room, um, 2t minus pi sine pi t squared dt. And you know, that is super formulaic. Let's go ahead and grab our calculators and put all that stuff in there. Well, there's our calculator. I've put into the calculator um, our equations for velocity x and velocity y. I uh, put those in y1 and y2. Uh, do a quick check for accuracy. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, putting the functions into the y equals, it really does save you a little bit of frustration, especially if you happened to have made a mistake. Um, I always say that every time you have to type in a long, complicated function, you run the risk of making a mistake. If you just type it in one time and then just keep checking your calculator, then you know you, less chance of you making an error. All right, so we've gone ahead and we've put it in to our y equals menu. Uh, now. Uh, when we get to the home screen, notice that you can do a neat thing like this, where you're just integrating from 0 to 4. You're squaring each one of those components and adding it together. And that looks a whole lot neater than what you might have been tempted to type in the calculator right away. So I really believe that this cuts down on a lot of the syntax errors, which might be frustrating you. All right, let's push Enter here, and that'll get us an answer. And it's going to take a while. This is a pretty gnarly cal calculation. I mean, super gnarly. Ah, 33, 532, <laughs> 33, 53, 271. And that's the total distance. Okay. Isn't that exciting? I guess that's all. I don't know how long that is. All right. And moving on to our important ideas. There we go. Our velocity, um, our acceleration as the derivative of velocity. Even furthermore, it's the second derivative of position. Each coordinate, you can use the fundamental theorem of calculus to find a displacement in uh, either x or y. You can also find a change in velocity, x and y, by using the fundamental theorem of calculus on acceleration components. And then the concept of displacement as a net change in position, that is the flat out integral. Remember, the integral doesn't give position, it gives a change in position. So one of the big errors that I see my, student, my students make. So you can pause that now. 
um, if you need to copy that down pausing three two one moving on the position of a particle is given by uh, 3t squared 2t squared find the acceleration vector this is child's play the velocity vector is equal to the derivative of each of those components which is 6t and 4t child's play acceleration vector acceleration vector is the derivative of the velocity vector uh, components so the derivative of 6t is 6 the acceleration uh, the derivative of 4t is 4 so there's my um, acceleration vector notice it's uniform acceleration all the way through um, and I think this is our final one the velocity vt of a particle moving in a plane is given by um, again admittedly a pretty gnarly looking function position 2 6 at t equals 0 so first of all find the position of the particle at t equals 3 and then the distance to travel the particle travels from 0 to 3 um, we'll work along with you on this one. If I want to find the position, I just need to integrate each one of those coordinates for the displacement. So the integral from, well, what are my two, what are the times that I need to know? At t equals 0 and t equals 3. Okay, so over here we're going to go from 0 to 3. That's how we do it. The velocity in the x direction is 3t squared minus 2t dt. That's going to give me the x coordinate at the 3 minus the x coordinate at 0. What is this antiderivative? That's t cubed minus t squared 0 to 3. That's going to be equal to. Um, the x coordinate at 3 minus the x coordinate at 0, which I'm reading over here, is 2. So we're going to put a 2 here. All right. Substituting this all, this is 27 minus 9 minus 0 minus 0. That's equal to the x coordinate at 3 minus 2. Therefore, the x coordinate at 3 is equal to, um, oh, I don't know, 27 minus 9 is 18. 18 plus 2 is 20. Okay. How about the y coordinate? Similar job, 0 to 3. This time we're putting the um, y component of velocity, which is 1 plus 1 plus cosine of pi t dt. That's going to be equal to the y coordinate at 3 minus the y coordinate at 0. How about antiderivatives? Antiderivative of 1 is t. Antiderivative of cosine is sine. Antiderivative of pi t is pi. So this is plus 1 over pi sine of pi t from 0 to 3. That's going to be equal to y3. y0 is 6 from up here. That's y0. Let's compute this. What do we got? 3 plus 1 over pi sine of 3 pi, or sorry, yeah, 3 pi minus 0 plus 1 over pi sine of 0 pi. That's equal to y3 minus 6. So we can compute all this. Maybe I'll take this a little bit slow. This is 3 plus 0 minus 0 plus 0, and this is equal to y3 minus 6. So y3 is equal to 3 plus 6. That gives me at the position at 0 is equal to 
Let's see, the x coordinate is 20, the y coordinate is 3 plus 6, which is 9. There's my position, 29. Okay, how about the distance traveled from 0 to 3? Okay, so the distance traveled is, uh, let's, um, integrate. The distance traveled is the integral of speed. So we're going to integrate from 0 to 3. Integral of velocity x squared plus velocity y squared dt. And that's equal to the integral from 0 to 3. And don't make a mistake here. The uh, this is a velocity vector, so I don't need to take any integrals here. I'm just going to put these components right into the antiderivative. So this is 3t squared minus 2t squared plus 1 plus cosine pi t squared dt. Over here, we've got um, the x component of the velocity in y1, the y component of velocity in y2. We're going to take our calculator now, and we're going to go to our home screen and type in our integral. Notice how much nicer that looks again. Uh, 0 to 3, uh, yeah, there's not a whole lot more to do here. Uh, we're going to integrate that with our calculator. And calculator says 19, 34, 334. So the distance traveled is 19, 34, 334. And that takes care of this section 11.2. Two? Two? Yeah, 11.2. So that's it, everyone. Good luck with your assignment, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.